How's it going, everybody? I'm Lemugre, and this is part two of All Megas Explained. In the last episode, we explained all the new Megas stats, and uh, in this episode, we're going to go ahead and check out move sets for every single one of the new Mega Pokemon, <laughs> except Hoopa. And here we go! So we're gonna go ahead and start this off with Mega Sceptile. Mega Sceptile, as we already covered, gets the ability Lightning Rod, Immune to Electric Types, etc, etc. And it becomes Dragon Type. Let's go ahead and talk about moves. Now, Mega Sceptile has a very limited special move pool, unfortunately. His physical move pool is fantastic, and I would have loved for them to have given Mega Sceptile a lot more physical attack than special, but we get what we get. So, as for moves, I'm going to go with Dragon Pulse for the first stab, Energy Ball, although there are a few other options. I like Energy Ball because of the 100% accuracy. I don't like moves that miss. Moves that miss is a gamble, and I don't like to gamble my victories. I like to be assured. Other options are uh, Leaf Storm, which is 130 base power and 90 accuracy. A lot of people are going to go with that, even though that lowers your special attack by two stages every time you use it. The other moves is for, for coverage. Basically, the only other special move he gets that's worthwhile is Focus Blast, which I guess takes care of some uh, some steel types and rock. I don't know. It's really... And the, really, the only thing that you, you're left to round off it with is Hidden Power. Get you whatever Hidden Power you think works best for your team. Um, I think Hidden Power Fire works really well just to cover Scizor and, and Ferrothorn. But, uh, um, hey, whatever you guys think works best for you. And moving on to stats. Uh, Mega Sceptile, we already know, has 145 special attack, 145 speed. I would max both of those out with the remainder remaining four EVs in hit points, even though it's really not going to make a difference because... The, his only stats that really make a difference are his special attack and his speed. Everything else is kind of useless. Now, there are two options. You can go with a timid nature or a modest nature. Uh, go with a timid nature if you want a chance at outspeeding Mega Beedrill because they speed tie. They both have 145 speed. Otherwise, modest. Mega Swampert. Basically, your main stab moves are going to be Earthquake and Waterfall. Just like not Mega Swampert. They're his strongest attacks. Ice Punch for um, Grass Coverage. Because if you didn't know already, he only has one weakness, and that's Grass. And finally, Rain Dance. Because anything else is um, just not really worth it. I mean, I guess you could go with Barrier if you want to boost defense a little bit, if you think you get the chance. But uh, basically, you're only going to want to use uh, Mega Swampert in rain with this set. For stats, it gets a little tricky. Obviously, you want to max out attack. That's obvious. And uh, with an adamant nature. But here's where it gets tricky. Uh, you want to give it 52 points in speed. Because that is just enough for him to outspeed Greninja. Okay? In race, of course, you know, with Swift Swim activated. His uh, 70 base speed, which is, makes for 140, isn't really enough to outspeed the uh, Sceptile. But uh, I think this puts him at a good place. For the rest of it, that's 204 points into HP just to bulk in him out. I mean, obviously, you could go max speed. But as soon as your rain wears out, your Swampert is basically garbage. Now, there is another set that I put together for Swampert that I haven't seen anybody talk about uh, at all. A slower, bulkier set. So, 252 in attack, 252 in HP, and 4 points in defense. Or special defense, whatever floats your boat. Uh, for this, you keep Ice Punch, Earthquake, Waterfall, but also give him Hammer Arm. I figure this is a bulkier set to work with uh, Trick Room teams or just uh, just a regular tank team, you know? You could also get rid of Hammer Arm and give him Barrier. That would also work. Mega Sableye is a Pokemon that surprised me with how much potential it has. I mean, I was already expecting it to be good, with, you know, just having Magic Bounce, but then I realized that when you mix Magic Bounce with Mean Look, 
That is just an insane combination. I mean, look, magic bounce. Uh, their tank is done. Okay, I mean, they switch in with uh, with a physical or a special wall, and, and it's done. That it's over. That, that's it. So yeah, I give uh, Mega Sableye, Mean Look, Toxic, Will O Wisp, and Recover, and the other guy can just pray that he will get out. Okay, and it won't do a thing. Uh, as for stats. I personally would maximize both defenses, both defense and special defense, max them both out. Four points in HP, and go with a calm nature or a careful nature, just to get a little more uh, special defense for your buck. And that's about it for Mega Sableye. Mega Altaria unfortunately didn't quite get the stat boosts it needed to make it 100% viable without assistance. So really you only can do a Dragon Dance set with it. But at least now you have a, a Pixelate move with Return. Pixelate is going to give this uh, 1.3 times extra damage uh, along with granting it stab as well, making it an extremely powerful hit. I'd also give it uh, Dragon Claw and Earthquake just to help round out uh, the coverage. As for stats, I'd max out the speed, give it about 160 points in, uh, in attack, and the remaining 96 in HP. Just because you're gonna need a turn of Dragon Dancing before you're able to get anything out, and that extra HP might be the difference between surviving and not. And you're gonna boost your attack anyway within a turn or two. Mega Gallade has an incredible 165 attack. That's just insane. But he doesn't quite get the speed to back it up and with no priority moves, there's not much you can do with him unless you baton pass some speed into him. But, ignoring that, there are two basic sets for him. One is Swords Dance and Close Combat, while the other is Bulk Up and Drain Punch. Okay, those two sets go hand in hand. And you can fill off uh, the remaining two slots with knock off a really strong and sometimes game crippling move. You could totally destroy some Pokemon by just getting rid of their item. And uh, Zen Headbutt for a little extra stab. As for spread, go with an adamant nature for sure. Make sure you maximize on that damage, seeing as there's probably going to be some things that outspeed you anyway with 110 base speed. But hey, if you want to go with uh, the faster nature, the jolly, that's on you. Go ahead. Now, with Mega Audino's healer ability, you can tell that he's specifically made for doubles. The yeah, healer ability gives adjacent Pokemon a 30% chance to heal their status uh, ailments, such as uh, paralysis or poison. Now, I think Audino works best as a support Pokemon for doubles. So, I personally would do a dual screen set with him with Reflect and Light Screen, throw in Heal Pulse and Knock Off to disrupt the other team, and also to prevent him from becoming Taunt Bait. As far as EVs go, I would max out Defense and Special Defense with either an Impish Nature or a Careful Nature, it doesn't really matter, depending on how your team is doing, and the remaining four EVs in HP. That is what I personally would do, but there are many, many options for Audino, seeing as he, there is a very strong move pool. You could also be a singles uh, set with uh, Trick Room, or he could be a Wish Protect. There's a lot of different things that you could do with uh, Mega Audino, but I think he works best in the doubles format. Now, onto one of my favorite Pokemon, Mega Sharpedo. Now, this thing is power. What you want to do is you want to go Waterfall Crunch, those are your main stab moves. Then you're going to either do Ice Fang or Poison Jab, depending on what you're more worried about coverage-wise. I personally would go with Poison Jab just because it protects from both Fairy and Grass. The most important part is you want Protect, because that way you can protect first turn without Mega Evolving and get that speed boost, and then Mega Evolve on your second turn to gain the Strong Jaw ability. Now, when you're talking about EV spreads, you want 252 in attack, and then you want to divide between uh, speed and HP. You want to put about 152 EVs into speed, and that will allow you to outspeed Mega Beedrill and Mega Salamence. 
uh, with one speed boost under your belt. Uh, the rest of 104 EVs go into HP. So here's the thing about Mega Slowbro. With full investment in defense, he gets over 500 defense at level 100. 504 to be exact, with full investment, that is. This, this is insane. Basically, what you want to do here is you want to make a Calm Mind set. I go with Calm Mind, Psy Shock, Surf, and Slack Off to recover. Now, instead of Surf, a lot of people use or will be using Scald. But I just think I prefer the extra 10 points in damage uh, than the chance of burn. I just I feel like it's worth more for me. But uh, you guys do whatever you feel is right. Psy Shock is to hit uh, special walls. And it's about all you really have to know. That's it. The first thing you notice when you look at Mega Steelix is base 230 defense. That's mind-blowingly huge. But then you see 95 special defense, which in comparison is abysmal. But when you look at it objectively, isn't that bad. So what I would do is try to boost that as high as po possible. Max EV is in HP, max EV is in special defense, remaining for in attack. With the sassy nature, that means more special defense, less speed, and I will explain that when I talk about moves, which I will do right now. What you want to do is you want to give him a curse set. Curse, if you don't know, boosts your attack and your defense, but lowers your speed by one point. Then you want to Earthquake. Gyro Ball takes advantage of that uh, terrible speed, and Taunt, to make sure that they're not doing some tricky shit. And uh, they just hit you with physical attacks. That's about it for Mega Steelix, so let's all cross our fingers that it doesn't turn out to be Jap uh, Japan exclusive. Mega Pidgeot gets the ability No Guard. That means that he's going to be able to spam Hurricanes all the live long day. Uh, if you don't know, Hurricane is a base 110 uh, attack with 70 accuracy and a 30% chance to confuse. Mega Pidgeot doesn't have the best speed. I mean, his speed is good, don't get me wrong, but it's not the best. So what I would do when it comes to EV spreads is I would uh, max out special attack, first of all, with a modest nature, and then put the other 252 into HP and the four into speed, and then try to get an agility under your belt before sweeping with, hur with Hurricane. That would be m what I would do. As for filler moves, Heat Wave takes care of Steel types, and if you have access to Hidden Power Ground, that would work. If not, Pidgeot makes a good, fast defogger. So that's Hurricane, Defog, Agility, Heat Wave. That would be mine. Mega Glalie is basically a suicide lead. He gets the one of the strongest attacks in the game. Uh, he gets a Refrigerate Explosion. That's insane. Explosion is a 250 base power move. What you want to do is you want to try to set up entry hazards, for example, spikes. Well, pretty much the only entry hazards you get are spikes. Or a light screen and then explode and take whatever you have with you. You can also give him return to see, uh, depend it really all depends on what you're up against. If you don't think you can take what, you, what you're up against with returns, then go ahead and set up and explode. If not, return away. Give him basically Jolly Nature, 252 speed, 252 attack, and 4 HP. That's about it. It's not very complicated, this one. That explosion really puts fear in people's eyes. Okay, so this is what I see with Mega Deonsi. First turn, you want to Rock Polish without Mega Evolving. Just because when Deonsi uh, Mega Evolves, she switches her extremely high defenses for extremely high attack stats. So her base 150 defense and special defense become 110 defense and special defense, and her 100 attack and special attack become 160 and 160. So uh, what you want to do is rock polish that first turn, get your speed doubled, then you want to mega evolve and diamond storm until they are dead. If you get a chance, you can also throw up some reflects or some light and some light screens. 
Like, for example, you're up against somebody and you know they're going to use Protect or something like that because they've already done it. You can go ahead and throw a Reflect or a Light Screen up just to increase your durability a little bit more. As for EVs, 252 Adamant Nature Attack and split uh, between Defense and Special Defense the remaining. So 128 and 128. That is what I would do. Mega Metagross's base 150 defense is nothing to laugh about. So what I would do is give 252 attack, 252 defense, 4 HP, and then just hit him up with agility. So for a moveset, I would go with agility, meteor mash, bullet punch, and zen headbutt. I know it sounds odd to have both agility and bullet punch on the same set, but sometimes you can't always afford to take that first turn to use agility. So um, a bullet punch is good for that. It's also good for, you know, outspeeding other priority Pokemon. So for Mega Camerupt, to be honest, there's not a lot of work to work with. But Sheer Force is a great ability works, that works with uh, Lava Plume, boosting its power. Also Eruption, another great move that Camerupt gets. So basically, early turns you want to use Eruption. And as you decrease in, in HP, you move towards Lava Plume. Earth Powers, another, so a little bit of more good coverage and some strong stab. Lastly, you want to go with, if you're on a Sun Team, Solar Beam. Otherwise, Hidden Power Grass if you have access to it. There's, he doesn't get very much coverage, really. As for stats, you want to put 252 in Special Attack and uh, the rest either in special defense or in defense depending on how your team is with a quiet nature that's reducing speed because you'll most likely want to be using camera up on a trick room team mega salamence makes for a fantastic dragon dancer with 145 attack and 120 base speed with only one or two dragon dances under his belt he can sweep an entire team just give him Dragon Claw, Return, and Earthquake, and I think that pretty much has it covered. I mean, 252 Attack, 252 Speed, Adamant Nature, 4 points in hit in HP, and you're good to go. Lopunny gets a lot of advantages when it Mega Evolves. It gets the Scrappy ability along with an extra Fighting Typing, making it normal fighting. What I would do here is I give it Fake Out, Power Up Punch, Jump Kick, and Return. I think that makes for uh, some interesting play. You could start out with a Fake Out, and if your enemy is weak enough, you could try and finish him off with a Power Up Punch. If not, then go with the Jump Kick or the Return, and, you know, whichever one fits. As for stats, pretty easy. Max Out Attack, uh, Max Out Speed, give it a Jolly Nature, I believe. And the remaining four points in HP. Last but not least, we have Mega Beedrill, who is the definition of glass cannon. Now, Beedrill gets the adaptability ability, adaptability ability ability ability, <laughs> which means uh, his stab moves are not going to do 1.5 times damage, they're going to do twice as much damage as usual. So, Poison Jab and U-Turn are his main uh, uh, stabs here. U-Turn uh, is going to be an insane ability, or uh, an insane move here. And uh, Drill Run is going to be good for coverage. Now, the other thing you want to give B-Drill is Protect, because he's not going to get that huge boost in speed until the second turn. And if anything touches B-Drill, he is dead. Like, dead as a doornail. Dead. So give him 252 attack, 252 speed with a jolly nature, and 4 points in HP. The end. And that's it! That's all the Mega Pokemon there are. Thank you so much for watching this video, and if you liked it, if I helped you out, please remember to leave a like, it really helps me out a lot. And smash that subscribe button, I hope to see you next time, I'm the Moon Gray. Happy grinding. Bye-bye.